right, we are here in State versus Montgomery, multiple docket numbers. Council for the State, please identify yourself for the record. Chris Knowles for the State. And Ben Agon for the State. And good morning. Caroline Smith with the Public Defender. And Robin Davis. All right. Uh, Attorney Smith, it's my understanding that Mr. Montgomery uh, refused transport this morning, so he is not here for this hearing. Is that your understanding? Uh, yes, Your Honor. May we approach? Yes. with the final pretrial conference and the dispositional conference on the other two matters. So let's talk about uh, the case that's coming up for trial. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to start with the state. Uh, state is ready for trial, correct? We are, Your Honor. All right. And I did see, I believe, an updated witness list. Let me just take a quick look. How many witnesses? Uh, does the state the state anticipate actually calling? Is it what's reflected on the current witness list? I'm just trying to get a reality of the number of days that we think this trial will take. Uh, so the amended witness list came in on 511 and it's a, almost 50 witnesses so to, to include keeper of the record. So can you give me a somewhat uh, somewhat more realistic estimate of the number of witnesses you anticipate calling? Your Honor, I anticipate, um, I anticipate we'll need five to seven days for our case in chief. Okay. And number of witnesses, can you give me an approximation? So, uh, obviously, we're, we reserve the right to call any of the witnesses on our of list. Of course. Um, but I anticipate um, 15 in our case in chief. Okay. And that would include the keeper of the records. All right. Um, and Attorney Smith, for the defense, any additional witnesses other than should the defendant choose to testify? Yes, Your Honor. I think about four or five. And those witnesses, that witness list, was that? Uh, I'm just looking. I have the last, most recent one that was submitted on 5 1, correct? That, uh, well, that's yes. an additional. Yes. That was additional based on um, new discovery from the state. All right, and let me just, I just, do you have the date of the last 
witness this submission? April 26. Okay. All right. So for the four to five are the April 26 and May and May 1st submissions. I just want to make sure that I have all of the witnesses all of the lists so that I can, when it comes time to read that to the prospective jurors, I can do that. There are a couple on my list that I expect the state will be calling, so I am saying that in addition, four to five from the state's witnesses, yes. Okay. But I guess if the state doesn't call uh, an officer or... Uh, right. Then I might. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, I just want to make sure that I have every all the names that I need to also read to the jurors. Do you agree with the assessment that this is going to be five to seven days? Yes. Okay. Uh, view. I can tell you that I have been in touch with the House of Correction. I think I've told the state this. We're going to try first to arrange a um, view for defense counsel the state has to apparently go with us to do that, and I will need a court order, and by the end of the day, I will submit a proposal to allow us to go into the jail, have our own view, and take photographs. If I feel like a video or a photograph is sufficient, I will not be requesting a view, but if it is not, then I will. Are you planning... the? If you use a video, are you planning to do it on this visit, or no, you're going to need a separate visit to think about doing it that way? No, we will do it on the visit that we go to observe. Okay. Uh, State, have anything to say about that? Your Honor, I would just note that the court granted the state's request to, um, for an extension of time to respond to the, the motion to eliminate regarding the view, and so we would just reserve any argument for that motion. All right. So. We're working in a narrow time frame, and you know, I gave you some additional time, and I'll give you that time, but I just want you to be cognizant when you ask for extensions, that also reduces the amount of time, given how close we are to trial, for the court to respond to these motions. Um, and it's also, uh, I guess, you're in agreement, though, that you've spoken to the jail, you're in agreement at least to do this, to do to do a view amongst yourselves and to potentially take this video? You've had that conversation with them? I did, Your Honor, yes. Okay. Ms. Uh, Smith and I spoke yesterday, and so my understanding is that that's going to be arranged and the state will be available for that viewing. Okay, and you've spoken to the superintendent about that? He was the one that gave us the instructions that okay. nothing can be done without a court order, and so, I w as I say, I will submit a proposal for you before the end of the day. And did you talk to him about timing? Uh, and the video issue, all of that? No. I, and Okay. The video issue, wanting the photographs in the video, was part of the conversation. When we're going to do it was we got the instructions from him and we'll move forward. Of what he needs, we'll get it and we'll make the arrangement. Okay. Um, but the state has not yet spoken to the jail here itself. I'm, I'm just concerned that there's some... You know, I don't know what the jail's response is going to be, uh, and I just want to make sure that there's enough time for you to go in. That you know, if if there's a responsive pleading to be had on the video, that's just excuse me on the view. That's just whether or not the parties, whether or not the jurors take a view. But the but you have no objection, and my the state has no objection to the granting of the request for you to go into the jail, but also to take, potentially take videos and photographs. Am I, act, am I correct about that? Yes, Your Honor, you're correct. There's no objection to that. Okay. We're going to work with the defense to that end. Okay, and with the jail. Correct. I just want to make sure that... It, and I will say, Your Honor, this was a brand new witness that gave rise to the right. issue. I think right. we got him at the same time that the state filed their witness list on the 11th. I'm moving as fast as I can. Okay. Um, all right. Probably uh, got it before the 11th, but didn't realize it.
Oh, I take that back. April 26. I just hadn't realized who he was because it came by um, audio. So this is, and you're going to be very specific about in this requested order who is going, whether there are the lawyers, I don't know if investigators, you're intending to have investigators go with you, uh, that you will have communicated clearly with the jail around, you know, any photograph and video issues, because I, I suspect that that, that that may be uh, of some concern security-wise to the jail. So I just want to be sure that you've sort of dotted all those I's and crossed all those T's before you step in that door, okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm just noting that the state's response to the jury view is pending. Um, all right. Uh, in the in the event that the court grants a view for for the jury, Attorney Smith, I assume you will be arranging. Make you be you would be making the arrangements on that. I've made no decision about that. I don't even have the state's response. Uh, so, but that would be defense obligation. That was my understanding about how this court does it. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. There are pretrial, many pretrial motions pending. The court has those under advisement. Uh, so I, I'll be issuing orders on those uh, as soon as I can. There are a couple of, I think there are three that the court is still awaiting state's response on. So when I get that, I'll, I'll start reviewing those. But I expect that I'll be working through the ones that are pending now. Any, anything you want to raise on any of those, uh, Attorney Smith? It seems to me the one with regard to Kayla Montgomery would be an evidentiary uh, hearing. The state has just submitted uh, exhibits, and uh, there's a fair amount of dispute between us. And I understand also in Bertrand, Bertrand, <coughs> which the state relies on, the court did hold an evidentiary hearing with the uh, witness in that case. Uh, and it seems to me that given the state's response, uh, that it requires an evidentiary hearing. Do you agree with that, Chair Knowles? Your Honor, I do not. And so if I can just take up the, the motions and eliminate first and then um, circle back to the, the argument raised by Attorney Smith. Go ahead. So the court did grant an extension on three of the motions, and in its order, the court noted that there was a motion eliminate regarding marital privilege that was still outstanding and um, would benefit from the state's response. The state didn't receive that motion until yesterday, and I, I spoke to Attorney Smith about that, and she sent it to us. I think it was filed ex parte um, inadvertently. Um, but we've received that now, and ah, okay, thank, thank you. I appreciate a better a better understanding of the explanation for that. that, that, that that's it, that's helpful. Okay. Right, um, and so I'll work with the court's deadline of Friday, I believe, that was imposed, um, and we'll get a response in. Um, <clears throat> unless there are any questions, I'll turn to the argument raised by Attorney Smith. Okay, as, as what I heard her say is that there was a. I have, we may, be, we may be not be talking about the same issue, so let me just see this, oh, okay, you're talking about the past abuse, not the issue of, uh, not the ma marital privilege issue. Correct. Okay. Um, so, go ahead. And so, Judge, the reason I bring up the marital privilege issue is because I, I think that would um, be determinative and part of any evidentiary hearing that the court may hold uh, regarding Ms. Montgomery. Um, but addressing the concern on, on whether or not an evidentiary hearing is appropriate under the, the analysis, I don't think it is. In the, the case um, that was cited in Bertrand, the reason for the evidentiary hearing was the lack of information regarding the the witnesses' potential statements. 
in my filing yesterday afternoon, my reply to the defendant's objection, I included an exhibit, uh, two exhibits. I included a transcript of Ms. Montgomery's third proffer in which she, she outlines in details the extensive abuse that she, um, that she suffered at the defendant's hands in direct correlation to the, the threat that she posed to him with respect to turning over evidence regarding his um, alleged criminal conduct. And so I think that any, it, well, it's the state's position that any, any ambiguity regarding what she may say is, is resolved in that statement. And so an evidentiary hearing is not, uh, not needed or appropriate. Do you want to respond to that? Yes, Your Honor. Um, she certainly outlined some things that she alleges that Mr. Montgomery did. She does not and has never made a nexus between that and her testimony at grand jury or her statement prior to that testimony. In fact, as you saw, in fact, she said, she, first of all, she was separated from him for a year. Um, she gave a statement to the police prior to grand jury where she implicated Adam in the firearms. Uh, she was protecting herself, not Adam. They had been separated for a year. She never said, the reason that I said this was because of this. In Bertrand, there were clear threats. She w the witness in Bertrand was in the relationship right up to the um, homicide, and the actions that she took with re regard to the homicide and lying to police, she took because of the threats of, I'm having you watched, I can do things, of contemporaneous threats and violence. They had been separated for a year. She had actually filed for divorce prior to the grand jury. She told the grand jury she was no longer afraid of him. And quite frankly, um, I have not had the opportunity to go through the um, submission by the state last night. But so I don't know if they've submitted all the things that she's <coughs> talked about with regard to the March 2023 statement. But the nexus is not made there either. So if they're trying to make, they're actually making their own conclusions based on information she gave of a year prior to her grand jury testimony. So I think if there's going to be a nexus made, they have to have an evidentiary hearing. All right, I'm going to, as you mentioned, all of this came in yesterday. Um, I am going to review all of it together. If I decide that an evidentiary hearing is necessary, one will be scheduled. Um, so uh, anything else uh, the state wants to say regarding uh, regarding the pending motions in limine, other than that you're going to get your responsive pleadings in as soon as you can within the deadline that's now been set? So, Your Honor, the state would actually request a hearing early next week to argue outstanding motions in the minute. And we'd request that that hearing be um, a deadline for any stipulations between the parties. I think there are three potential um, stipulations that are outstanding and we're close on all three. We just need to have another conversation. Um, all right, let me see if I have any time next week at all. <clears throat> Actually, I'm in jury trials next week, so let me just take a look. You know what, we're going to have to uh, work with the clerk and see, oh, you know what, do we, can we do it after jury selection, the late afternoon on Monday? I may have some, 
So you want me to hold off on ruling on the pending motions between now and Monday? Is that what I'm hearing from you because you may have some stipulations on them? No, the stipulations I don't, we're going to reach a stipulation. What happened was I thought I had responded to a proposal by the state because I only had minor changes and Attorney Knowles reminded me that I had not responded. So uh, I expect that we... With regard to the stipulation on the felon, um, we had you know discussed what, if you don't it before. Mind, I didn't bring my. I have a list, a working list of them. I'm going to step off the bench for just a minute and grab that list. Excuse me, just one minute. I'm just going to grab my work. do you think you're going to need uh, for a hearing on the limiting motions? Your Honor, I, I suspect we need at least two hours to argue those motions. Minimum, minimum of an hour. I see you shaking your head. Well, We'll let you know. I mean, I, it's the best I can say. Right now, the docket is full. I have a pick and go jury starting on Monday for the rest of the week. Drug court is Tuesday. There's maybe a little bit of flexibility Tuesday morning, so hold on to that. But we may have to move some things in order to get this in. So, uh, so we will keep you posted. Okay. Um, but it is possible. Can you do a Tuesday morning at some point if? Yes, if yes need be. I am available. All right. Um, so I'll work with the clerk and we'll, we'll see if we can make some time there. Okay. All right. Uh, so <clears throat> the, the stipulation regarding the felonies. Yes, I think that we're going to reach it. I was not... Uh, I thought I had sent them my response. I had not. We're going to take care of that okay. for sure. Then there so we, was the issue similar with the voir dire again. Um, we expect to reach an agreement on that, and we can have it in, I'm sure, by the end of the week. The, can you just use the name that's actually on the, the motion? Oh, that, Request. That's, that, that's from, yeah, go ahead. Request yeah, it was, from, it was from, I have it as document 72 from way back when? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. And you issued an order, and uh, we were going to reach an agreement, and we will. Okay. And what's the third one? 
Did you say there was a third? Oh, yeah. The issue of identity of who Mr. Reed was communicating, uh, that the message address that Mr. Reed was using uh, was Adam Montgomery's. So we had the issue about whether other guns came in because of identity. We're agreeing to identity that he, Mr. Reed is communicating with. Uh, Adam Montgomery at the address that Adam Montgomery, um, that he had communicated with Adam Montgomery with before. Regarding, regarding the, the messaging app? Yes. yes. That the identity is the messaging app that he had communicated with Adam yes. Montgomery before. Okay. Yes. Okay. Some, some of these uh, motions in limine, the court may not feel that it's necessary to have a hearing on. Um, I, I suppose that I, you know, if you're asking me to wait on all of them, um, I, I can certainly. Um, So um, do you want to you want to just wait until we we get there and yeah I suppose I can just wait and we can tick through them on that day but I don't know how you feel about are you if you want me to wait on all of them even if I think there's uh, I you know I don't need a particularly need an that's argument not on them. Your Honor, if you, okay. I, I think all of the motions have been thoroughly briefed and are ripe for decision. Okay. If your Honor feels that it's appropriate to rule on those. Um, any that are outstanding as of Tuesday morning, I think we can take up and, and argue. Okay. I think that makes good sense. I don't have a response to the motion for disclosure of grand jury. That, I think that was one of the ones you, for, there was a request for an extension, right? Ah, that's right. Okay. Right so, and did you see that? There was a request yes, for extension I, of I, two I, of them, and then I wanted the one on the marital privilege issue, right. so I have three that I'm awaiting three responses from the state. I think I have all of the other responses. Um, so we will uh, we'll take up what's left, and, may, and maybe I'll you know review them all carefully and then hear any additional information that I need when we get this scheduled uh, for a further hearing. Um, so does that sound okay to everybody? Yes, Your Honor, and I expect that in light of the state's submissions on uh, prior abuse, like I say, I think it has to be an evidentiary hearing. They haven't made the nexus, but I will probably be providing uh, more paper exhibits for context in light of what they submitted last night. I'll All have right. it in quickly. Okay, right that, away, would, that uh, would be great. Get it in. Get it in quickly. All right. So, how long do we think we're going to need? Uh, you all are going to be submitting. When are you going to submit the agreement on the special voir dire questions? Before the by the end of the week. So, Your Honor, the, the state's request was that that submission deadline for any stipulations be the day of the day that we argue motions in the May. So next Tuesday, if that's. I'll put it on for next Tuesday, and we can hope that we're able to get that hearing in on Tuesday. Like I said, I can't guarantee it, um, but we'll, we'll keep you posted on that. Is there any reason not to just set a deadline for those special voir dire questions for next Tuesday? That's no the problem. Your okay. Um, if we if we wanted to start at 8:30 on Tuesday, if we're able to schedule on Tuesday, if I move something, any impediments to doing that? 
That, that's fine for the state judge. We can also do earlier if the court prefers it. Okay. Um, I'm fine as well. Okay, very good. Uh, we'll keep you posted, okay? Um, all right. Uh, panel voir dire. Um, I, I suspect that there's going to be, obviously, lots of individual questioning that's going to happen at the bench, as is typical in any case, but particularly so here. That, I expect, will take longer than normal. How long do you think you want for panel voir dire? I would say, Your Honor, um, I would say that we will be looking for 20 minutes. I would agree. Okay. Um, so I'm going to set it at 20 minutes. I just want to, you know, I really like to set that so that one side doesn't hold it to 20 minutes and then the other side feels that they need more. So everybody agrees 20 minutes sounds sufficient. I think so. Okay. Um, may we approach on that issue? Yes. A similar issue. All right. Do we need interpreters for anybody? Not for the state's witnesses, Your Honor, no. No, Your Honor. All right. Um, Your Honor, if I may ask one, uh, uh, you're done voir dire. I have uh, still a couple of questions on voir dire. Sure. Okay. I just, okay, go ahead. All right. I just yep. No, on that's good. Topics. This is what today's for. Um, with regards to your preferred selection method, um, I've recently kind of seen two different styles. Um, the last trial that I did, uh, in that case, we ended up seating a panel that would include all of the jurors, alternates, and then also all of the preemptories that may be exercised by both parties. <coughs> then panel voir dire was conducted, God bless you. And separate from that, um, we ended up discovering that there were two jurors that needed to be excused for good cause during the panel voir dire. Uh, at that point, two additional jurors, because the rest of the jury panel was still sitting in the back, we were able to insert two jurors. The court clarified that they didn't have any problems with any of the conversations that had occurred. They were put back in. Um, the state didn't ask for additional voir dire time, but I know some courts want to give that. I don't know what your preference is, just so we know what to expect. So generally my practice is that we use the struck method, so mm -hmm. I, I uh, will fill the jury box and the additional, and we should make a determination how many alternates we want to select. Um, so it would include the number of peremptories. I usually uh, allow three peremptories each side. The statute and the rule are inconsistent if there's some strong reason why uh, you feel that four peremptories is necessary. But we, I think we will have gone through a pretty rigorous vetting process. So my inclination would be three peremptories for each side consistent with the statute. Then Attorney Agati, generally, before, as panel voir dire is about to begin, I tell everybody in the gallery they need to listen carefully to panel voir dire, even though it's largely directed uh, to the group that's in the box and at the front of the box, that they you know, may be selected. They need to uh, listen carefully, uh, consider what their answers might be to any of the questions that are asked, and then if there's a reason to excuse for cause, for the folks who've been selected, and we need to go back into the pool, um, I would then, we'd call the name, I'd bring actually bring the person up, not just say, do you have a yes answer by question, right. bring them up, ask them if they have a yes answers to any of the questions, um, if there's some specific narrow issue that you've raised that you want to ask them about generally as you did with the panel, I'd allow you to do that. Okay. So if, if that is acceptable to both sides, I think that 
gives sufficient latitude to make sure we're getting a fully fair and impartial jury. Just to sort of put an example to what you're saying, a, pan, a juror gets struck while the panel is going on. You're calling an individual from the um, pool. They talk about the general thing that everybody else who's gone up individually talks about. And then we might have the opportunity to say, you heard my questions about, say, 404B issues. You heard my questions about this. What are your thoughts? Is that what you're saying? Um, you know, in a really narrow way. I mean, I wouldn't, it, it's not individual voir dire, but, you know, I'll give you some latitude in that regard, but it's not to go through the 20 minute panel right, right, voir dire right. and ask them every question. It's, you know, to ask them, you heard, you know, uh, my questions to the general pool. Is there anything about those questions that you think would, you know, impede your ability to be a fair and impartial juror? You know, I asked them about the presumption of innocence. Can you, you know, follow the court's instructions on the presumption of innocence? You know, some, something like that, not to go through the whole panel voir dire. Uh, and if I feel like either party is taking advantage of that, then I will, I will stop you. But I, I would give you s some limited latitude in that regard. Does that sound appropriate to everybody? It certainly does to the state, Your Honor. Do you understand? I think so. Think so? I think so. Okay. Yeah. You you feel you feel comfortable with that plan? <laughs> I think so. Yes. Um, it's still sort of going through my head that I am able to pinpoint something in the voir dire that I want to make sure about, but not go over the whole voir dire. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the point is that they've you know did you listen to what the judge has to say? Or, excuse me. What what you had to say? during this panel voir dire process, was there anything in there that made you uh, feel that you could not be a fair and impartial juror? And, you know, if, you, if there's some limited targeted issue that you want to address, I, I'll give you some latitude to do that, but we're not going to have, you know, 40 minutes of individual voir dire with the person. Right. Okay. Right. I only have two last questions, thank you, yes. Your Honor. Um, also, would you prefer, um, and the last time I've done this, uh, I've we were instructed that the court preferred that during that panel voir dire, uh, we did not use leading questions, but asked much more open-ended questions. Uh, would you have that same preference? That would be my preference. Okay. Um, yes. And then lastly, uh, with regards to the uh, prospective jurors, um, whenever that list is ready, um, the state will be able to take that and we will run the criminal record checks, which are usually traditionally done by the state. So whenever that's available, uh, just let us know, and we'll be glad to get that run. It may take us two days to be able to get that turnaround done and being able to then get them scanned in and sent over to defense. But we would need about at least a two-day turnaround to get that completed, uh, okay. two business days. Okay. I'm going to ask you to just check in periodically. I'm looking to the clerk. Do you have any idea when that would be done? Okay, so um, we're just waiting for, we have quite a number confirmed and we're waiting for some additional confirmations for the, um, you know, for the questionnaires to come back. So just double check in with the clerk's office and they can let you know when that's ready. Certainly, we'll do that. Thank you. Let's talk about alternates, number of alternates. Um, I mean. I think at least a minimum of three, if not potentially four. Um, uh, I, Again, just based on recent experience, we picked three, and I think we ended up losing one the morning that we were supposed to start openings. Um, so uh, I, I would say uh, a great minimum of three, potentially four. I don't know that we need more than that with a five to seven day trial, though. I, I wouldn't think so. But my inclination would be three, but if, uh, Trudy Smith, what's your view? That's fine. Three? That's fine. Okay. And the questionnaires will be available on May 22nd. So Thanks speak to much. the speak to the clerk's office and they can get you those. Okay. We'll take care uh, of that. Um, okay. I'm going through our standard form, but I presume uh, there's no basis to extend any plea deadline. Um, so, all right. Um,
Um, in looking at the calendar, you know, much depends on how long it takes us to select the jury, but my sus I, I suspect we'll be able to pick it in that first day. Uh, we talked about a pick and go. Um, so. So we, right now, we're scheduled not to have the trial on June 6th, which is our drug court day. Um, this, I'm not sure how these got double booked, but we're going to have to look at this full dockets on a couple of those days. Um, yeah, I think we're working on that. So we're working on getting some additional coverage because we otherwise on the 8th and the 9th have uh, some significant issues. And I'm just looking to see. Clerk's office is on it. They're aware of it. Uh, the the issue is oftentimes the other issue is that generally I have a morning docket before we have a 10 a.m. start. Uh, I'm hoping that I'm looking now on Thursday the first. We have a 9 a.m. start, so I would expect where we can that uh, same thing with that Friday. I would, I would anticipate, you should anticipate that we'll have 9 a.m. starts. I'm going to try not to have a morning docket unless there's some exceptional reason why I need to do that. All right. Any, I'm assuming no one has any scheduling issues during this period, correct? No, Your Honor. We're anticipating, like you said, jury selection on the 31st, starting on the 1st, 2nd, 5th, 6th, obviously, uh, not for drug board, and then the rest of the week. There is some chance uh, that I would, there is some chance of that Tuesday the 6th, if you can hold it, just in case we're able to go straight through, um, don't fill it up. Is that, I know I had told you that we would not be having trial on Tuesday, but if, it, given that now it's a five to seven day trial, I think originally we thought it was a little less than that. Um, We'll see. I mean, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to cancel drug court, but if I could get coverage, then I would consider that. I think, with regards to the, the state's position on that, Your Honor, that's fine. We won't put anything on for that particular day. I am thinking about some of the witnesses, though. There are a few that need to travel from out of state to come okay. in. Okay. Um, as we get closer, I, I guess whenever the court knows that what that Tuesday is going to look like, if you could just let both of the parties know. Um, so we can plan out what those travel arrangements might be. If we have to get somebody here okay. last minute on Tuesday, it might be a little tough. Okay. Oh, we have? Okay. Okay. Right now, it doesn't look like we have coverage, so right now it looks like we won't have trial that Tuesday, but uh, I'll keep you posted, okay? Um, and I won't wait until Monday to let you know. All right. Um, any other issues that we need to address today? I don't know if we need to address it today. Um, you know, in an acknowledgment and waiver, it said if you can't get a witness into court, a witness in your favor, the um, court will order the witness in. We are doing pretty good with the subpoenas. There is certainly one person that we hope, still hope to get to, but I may be seeking additional assistance on that person. That's just okay. a heads up. Just file something. Uh, I just remind you that if it's not assented to, it's going to wait the 10 days. So uh, communicate with each other where you can on the issues. Um, anything further from the state? Um, just briefly, Your Honor, we would like to possibly schedule some time with your court reporter to be able to pre-mark exhibits. Yes, that thank you. a lot of time for trial. Yes. Um, so if whenever, um, whenever she's available and would be good for that week, uh, probably the week before, um, uh, we're happy to do it. I think we would probably need uh, one hour, maybe two tops. 
but I, I doubt that. I think we'll be able to get a lot of things done. Okay. Um, let me strongly encourage you to – I'm glad you raised that, uh, Attorney Gotti, because I do feel that pre-marking exhibits is – the trial goes much more smoothly, especially when, when there are exhibits that are agreed to and they can be marked as full in advance. Uh, I don't require it – Obviously, no, I don't, obviously don't require that there's an agreement to, to mark them as full, but I don't require pre-marking, let's say, for impeachment evidence or other evidence that there's some strategic reasons why the parties don't want to mark it in advance. But otherwise, uh, I do want you to pre-mark exhibits. I want you to exchange lists where you can so that you can decide what's marked as full, what's marked for ID, um, and then let the monitor do that. It is so much less disruptive, the trial goes so much more smoothly if everything that can be pre-marked is pre-marked, okay? So where you can agree, uh, agree. Where you don't agree, that's obviously fine as well, but, you know, sometimes if everybody knows, maybe both parties want the exhibit or everybody knows it's clearly a full exhibit, come to an agreement, pre-mark them uh, so that you can use them. And along with those lines, um, if it's okay with the court reporter, if there is a certain format uh, that she prefers in terms of, um, I know they all get typed up, so if there's some extent that the parties can agree that they would look to be in this particular order or have this description for each of the exhibits, we're happy to do that ahead of time and bring it in on pre-market. It'll save the court a little bit of time, but like you said, it'll save both the parties a lot of time during trial. Okay. Um, so I'll just have you get in touch with the monitor. You can work through that. And you, you're, you're looking quizzically about that, Attorney um, Smith. It's not quizzical. I have made it a habit of agreeing to ID and not having a disagreement about the admissibility of an exhibit. But I've also had the state and changes in trial strategy where something was marked as full that was not introduced at trial, um, which is why I have held with the habit of ID. Not that I'm objecting to it becoming a full exhibit. But if I agree as a full exhibit, A, it might come in under the wrong person, which I wouldn't want. Like, uh, this has to be authenticated or so. so um, you, let, let me put it this way. You don't, obviously, you don't have to agree to anything as a full exhibit. If you, if you are not comfortable with it and you don't want to do it, that's, you know, that's your trial strategy. What I can tell you is that my guess is you may look at certain exhibits and just agree that this is a full exhibit. It's coming in. I, you don't care. Maybe even you want it as a full exhibit. I encourage you where you can to do that. If you don't want to do it with any of them, that's, you know, I'm not going to hold it against anybody. That's part of the trial process. But it goes, you know, as I say, I just think the trial goes smoothly if you're not interrupting everybody's testimony while the monitor is uh, physically marking things. So where you can agree, agree. Where you can't agree, that's, that's fine. That's what the rules are here for. Okay. The last thing the state has, Your Honor, is just with regards to jury instructions. Um, does the court have a preference? Uh, recently I've seen it where they, they, it's been split jury instructions. Some of them were given actually before opening arguments and some after. Does the court prefer a traditional view of more after? What would you like? So uh, what I can do, I, I do bifurcate my instructions. I sometimes forget that you all haven't necessarily tried cases in front of me before, but uh, I do do bifurcated instructions. I'll give you a copy, the standard instructions I give. The reason I do that is I think it is kind of silly to give them an instruction about how to assess the credibility of witnesses after all the witnesses have testified. So there are, you know, burdens of proof, uh, presumption of innocence, you know, some of those standard instructions. Uh, I have a, uh, I do give at the beginning. I will get you copies of that if you have any objection to that. Uh, you should feel free to um, file something, talk to each other. If, but it has not been an issue so far in any case I've had. Uh, neither party objects, but if you do, you may be looking at this in a different way. That's fine. Definitions of a crime, the crimes in this particular case, and some additional standard instructions uh, I would give at the end of the case. So what I'll do is I'll share with you kind of a, a, a template, essentially, that I would intend to use, leaving out the definitions of the crimes themselves in this case, uh, and of course making room for any additional instructions that are particular to this case. So you'll kind of have that if you have any issue with that. 
like I said, talk to each other. You can file something if you need to see me, you know, briefly on that issue. We'll, that I can get you in for a 15-minute conversation about. Um, so, yes, unless somebody has an objection to bifurcated and maybe you just want to wait and hold any objection until you see them, but they're pretty standard instructions. Okay. And I would imagine, Your Honor, if we have um, anything, obviously we will talk about it with regards to certainly kind of the, the first part of the bifurcation uh, well in advance of, of that particular Wednesday. And if there's any sort of a disagreement about the other, uh, we would try to get that to, I would imagine, probably by the first couple of days of trial, so you at least have uh, several days to be able to consider that prior to us coming up on closings and the final part of the instructions. Yeah, I uh, do try to get you some some in, some uh, draft instructions early on so you can consider them and, and you know, submit any additions or changes uh, well before closing so you, you have an idea what you're, what you're talking about. Um, so I'm not going to set a deadline for you to submit instructions to me but uh, on the particular offenses, but if you want to do so, certainly uh, I can set a deadline so that you can look at them. Do you want a deadline for that or do you want to wait? I, the state's fine waiting, Your Honor. Okay. I agree. Okay. That's fine. Um, I'm going to circle back to you. I'm just going to let Attorney Agati finish his questions. Any, Sorry, anything anything no, further? Nothing else, Your Honor. We were just making sure. Uh, I think that's everything that was on our list for the day. Okay. Um, we're going to have to circle around on the dispos and the other cases in just a second, but let me just see, Attorney Smith, any follow-up questions, issues with regard to uh, this case, the trial case? I guess it's my issue about um, whether or not not knowing if we're going to have evidentiary issues on certain motions, I probably will be responding to some of the state's objections with documents from the case. When are you going to do that? Right away. Right away. Okay. Um, again, you're back on the motion in limine on past abuse. That's what we're, we're, we're confining it to that, correct? Well, I think also the alternative suspect and exculpatory evidence. The other firearms, I assume, will be resolved with the stipulation uh, because identity was the issue and we're stipulating to it. Uh, and so, I'm yeah. sorry, say, say that last, say this ag other again, the ones that you think you need to submit additional Probably just uh, the alternative suspect and exculpatory evidence. So you're going to file some kind of responsive pleading with attachments, is that what I'm hearing? Yes. And I don't, on those, did you request an evidentiary hearing on those? No. In light, no. In light of the state's response, however, I think that I need to correct uh, information that was put in their response. Okay. Um, and that'll, those will be, you feel comfortable submitting those by the end of the day today? I think so. Okay. Uh, can I have it by tomorrow, I think? I might be around here for a while before I get to the office. Okay. So tomorrow at noon, just I just I'm setting it so that I don't look at it or take it up before, before then. That's yes. Fine. Okay. Yes, noon is fine. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else? No. no. All right. Let's talk about the dispositional conference on the other cases. I guess the question is, do we want to hold off on that until we get? through these cases? Do you want to set those down for trial? I don't think that we do want to set them down for trial right now. We've got another case in December. and Right. My, my inclination would be just so that I, I would expect that, the, that those cases, uh, that any trial on those cases would happen after the December case. So they're, they don't, they're not particularly long or complex. 
uh, that we just put them on so we so that you know they're on the court's calendar for status on the date of the final pretrial for the December case. How, does that sound acceptable to everybody? It does, Your Honor. Okay, so I'm just going to put those on for status just so that you know they're they're on track like like we had them here. We won't set them down for trial. I think we can get them on for for trial if we need to do that uh, after that trial. Okay. Um, we'll either set them there or we'll set them for status on a date after that trial, like the, around the first of the year. Does that, maybe, maybe even that makes more sense, to set them down for a status in January. Do you think that makes? Yeah, I think so, Your Honor, because quite frankly, if we're, if we're there just before that particular trial in, in November going into December, um, I don't think the parties are going to be any, any changed position with regards to the disposition on these two other offenses. So maybe I think January so. 1st, sometime after the New Year. Yeah, mid-January. Put them on for status, and then if you want trial dates, we'll get them on a trial. Obviously, he'll have been incarcerated. Unless you object to that and you want it sooner, Trudy Smith. I was thinking that the uh, status conference on the December case would be a t just to say, should this be set for trial or that's not? That's fine. We'll put yeah. it on the final pretrial. That, that's that's totally fine. Um, okay. Anything else we can accomplish today? <clears throat> Nothing nope. else from the state, All right. Your Honor. Thank uh, you. Very good. We will keep you posted about that motion hearing. Hold on. They may not be ready. Uh, we're just talking about what? So I'm just, in terms of pre-marking exhibits, uh, monitor availability <laughs> might be best on a Tuesday when I'm otherwise in drug court staffing. Um, so, yes. well, the question is, would you be ready by May 23rd? You might be able to do some May 23rd and then the other ones if, if you needed more kind of May 30th. I'll, I can leave it. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, just you're absolutely right, Your Honor, in terms of we, we would have probably some definitely ready for the 23rd, in which case I think we would definitely do it in less than an hour. Um, but we may need additional time on the 30th to, to get a few more ready. I can't guarantee that we'll have everything set. Right. Uh, I agree. Okay, so why don't talk to each other, be in touch with the monitor. Uh, you know, you can, uh, the monitor now knows that we're talking about possibly doing it when the court is in staffing, because otherwise the monitor is in here with me. And as you can see, the dock is pretty, pretty full these days. I will get back to you on confirmation. You may be here next Tuesday anyway uh, for, some, for a motions hearing. Um, if we do need to have an evidentiary hearing for any reason, we're going to really need to, to work through the docket on that. As I understand it, what the parties are asking for is some oral argument, if the court needs it, on any outstanding motions in limine uh, for maybe an hour or so uh, at this point. And I'll take under consideration whether or not we need an evidentiary hearing on the past abuse issues. Does that sound Thank about you. right? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you, everybody, for your time this morning. Unless there's something else, uh, we will keep you posted. Um, but we'll plan to see for jury selection. We're going to have we're going to choose three alternates, three peremptories each side. Uh, I'll get you some bifurcated instructions. Okay. Thank you. All right. Very, Very good. Thank you, everybody.